Hello everyone and thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to do project four from the Cape Cod scrapbooking workshop kit. If you've watched the other three videos in this series, you know that I have loosely followed the actual scrapbooking workshop guide from close to my heart and I have made a few changes to it to make it more my style. And now I've got some leftover papers to play with. So I'm gonna go my own way and make some designs with this. This paper has anchors on one side in a periwinkle color and it's got the stripe on the other so I'm thinking I'm going to use these two as my base layers and I've brought out the zip strips as well because I think they will go together I know it's anchors and anchors so it's very theme on theme and looking at the way the pattern is I want the anchors obviously to be running in the right orientation I want this to show through so I did a little bit of playing and I came up with nine and a half inches by 11 inches for my white daisy piece and then I think I'll center this on the page like this so you've got quite a border going around here with the anchors showing and it's leaving the same width at the top and the bottom and then for the other side I'm going to do exactly the same and this way I can have the white daisy going all the way across I quite like this look on a double page spread when it's brought into the middle like this I think what I'm going to do is gut out the underside piece of that so I can take a fairly decent size out of this and then adhere the white daisy on top and the zip strips are going to run across the bottom edge like this so that brings these pieces in together. And now I just need to work out my photo placements. So I'm just gonna straighten this up a little bit. I think I've gone a bit crooked. And what I've done is just gone and cut some toffee card stock to match in with this zip strip. I'm just going to try and work out which way I'm going to do this. I do wanna do some stenciling on this page. So I might have two running along this way and then maybe one coming along here. Or will I bring them in like this? So this is why I like cutting mats so that I can play around with it and have a look at the orientation and what I think is gonna work with my photos. A lot of the time at the beach, I take landscape photos, but every now and then I do turn my camera around and take portrait ones as well. So I'm just trying to work out if I want to put these like this so that it's fairly symmetrical, but I do have an idea of a title that I want to use. Now this stamp set, Summer, it's just called Summer, is available in the current July, August catalogue. Now that's retiring very, very soon. So I do know that the scrapbooking workshop kit is currently still available. And the other thing I'm gonna bring in for this is the Cape Cod card making workshop. I purchased this not to make the cards, but because I really love the stamp set. So you can see here, the stamps have this distressed edge. It's got a gorgeous little font, just a little hello from me. I love that, I've already made some cards using that but primarily I wanted these thin cuts so when you cut these out you get all that detail on there you can see that it gives all those little details all those little cuts for all the shapes I'll just bring in the other shell and the starfish so that you can see this and I think what I'm going to do is spread these around my layout but I'm going to give them a little bit of treatment and I'm going to do some stenciling on my white so I'm going to get a little bit inky in a moment but I'm just going through what I think might work for this. Now I pre-stamped the summer, it's all in one piece on the set. So I stamped this in intense black and you don't have to line the letters up or anything, it is all in one piece and it creates a great scene. But what I decided to do, I colored it in with my tri-blend markers. And I've created these so that I've got the land here, the sand, and then a bit of the ocean and the sky. And I'm hoping you can pick up here, I left some white areas actually clear of marker and that sort of represents cloud. So I'm thinking that this is gonna go across the top here. I did fussy cut these letters out because I am going to do some stenciling behind these areas. And with it being on just a strip like this, it just, I thought it might look a bit flat. I wanted the stenciling to come through from behind these letters. And I do have some stickers left over. So I am gonna use those. Welcome to the beach. That seems like it would fit quite nicely here. And I've got this one. This was a die cut left over from project one. So I might put this one over this side. I'm primarily looking at ones that will fit with this periwinkle color. So I'm also looking at these titles. These are the sticker strips that are left over. 
and I think at the shore that's a periwinkle color so that will bring that periwinkle in onto this page from this base area I'm just going to cut this one out for the moment I think I'll use that I don't really want to bring in the lagoon colors so much at this stage and I quite like how that looks set at the bottom of that die cut printed piece and the stencil I'm going to use, I'll just bring in a little scrap of black here so you can see it a bit better, is from Stencil Pack 1. Now these are retiring at the end of this month and I can let you know there will be a whole lot of new stencils coming in the Essentials catalogue, the annual one that's going to start on the 1st of September. So if you're wanting these type of stencils from the core catalogue, if you've been looking at them, I would get them now because they're going to retire and they may not be available after the end of this month. But what I wanted to do with this is a bit of a dry fit with all of this because I'm thinking I might bring in the waves here. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this stencil here. That would work quite well with these seashells. So now I've shown you the direction that the layout is going to go. I'm actually going to take all of this off, move it aside because I want to do some stenciling on this area and down the side here for the right page and a little bit coming out for the left page as well. All right, I've moved everything out of the way so I can bring my stencil in and I've got some tape on here so that the stencil itself doesn't move and that's not adhering my piece of paper at all. So what I'm going to do is bring in some of the green tape the masking tape and adhere my piece of paper to my all-purpose mat so that doesn't move either so I'm going in with glacier first and I'm trying not to go onto the exact edge of this this pattern does repeat but I don't want a line in the middle here I don't have an item that's going to cover that piece off so I just want this to look a little bit loose so a little bit of glacier ink and you can see the stencil does move around so what you want to try and do is follow the lines of the stencil so I'm going to lift this up carefully because I want to bring in the periwinkle ink and you can see how gorgeous that looks and that fades off to the right there and it's going to fade off to the left as well so I'm just going to put this back down, bring in periwinkle and you can see I have been having a little bit of a play here. I'm going to just ink this up and then dab off a little bit so I don't get these harsh lines and then just bring the periwinkle in. So whenever I put ink on, I'm going to dab off. I do want to mix these two colours together just a little bit but I'm not doing a smooth blend over top of all the glacier element that I just inked up there. So I quite love those two colours together. Now, if you remember, I've got my summer title going across here. I've got two portrait six by four photos. So now I'm going to come over to this piece. I'm going to adhere this to my all-purpose mat. And then I'm going to repeat this again. So this is periwinkle ink. I want to come in with glacier and do exactly the same thing. I don't want to go right up to this edge here. And I am going to move this down, but I'm not trying to get the exact formation of the waves here. I just want a little bit of this pattern to go across. And now I'm going to bring in my periwinkle and remember to tap that off and come back in over some of the areas. And I can have a little sneak peek to see what that looks like. I think I need to ink this up just a little bit more to get a little bit more periwinkle. I've gone a little bit dark there, so I might have to find a sticker to go over the top of that. And I'm loving how this is looking. Now I'm going to do a little bit of stenciling down this side. So this is where this green tape, this masking tape is absolutely wonderful for paper. It doesn't pull the paper up at all. I know I use painter's tape quite a lot, 
with things because it does adhere really well to plastic but when it comes to paper this green tape is absolutely wonderful so I'm going to do a little bit more inking down in this area here and then I'm going to repeat that for the left page and then I'll be back with some of the page put together to show you the direction it's all going and how I'm doing the embellishments so that you can see how the page is turning out. I thought before I assemble things I would show you what I've done with the stenciling here and while I've got my inks out I'm going to bring in the die cuts I've done from the Cape Cod card making die cuts and I want to add a little bit of ink to these as well so before I start putting everything together I'm going to ink these up and I'll just bring in my piece of scratch paper again because I think what I'm going to do is use periwinkle for this so I'm going to bring this back in. Periwinkle is one of those colors where it's a real bluey purple type color but I just want to add a little bit of color to these die cut pieces and then after I've done that I think I'm going to bring in some shimmer brush as well. Now I still want to tap off so things don't get too blotchy but it doesn't really matter if some areas get more of the color than others. So you can see I'm just going around certain sections of this. I'm not doing the whole shell or the whole starfish. I'm just giving just a touch of colour to each of these. If I put this over a white area, you can probably see a little bit better that the colour is coming on here than what you can see with this all-purpose mat. But I do love all of the details that come with this die cut. There's just such a lot of detail in these with all those little lines that have been cut through but the whole piece just stays together. It really is a wonderful pin cut set to have. And I know that I'm just going to use it again and again and again. For this conch shell I'm just concentrating more on the middle section where it sort of curls in to give it a little bit of shadow there. But most of them I'm just doing one specific edge to it and just leaving the remainder white. And I'm going to bring in some shimmer brush. Now I don't have a periwinkle shimmer brush. So what I'm going to do is smoosh this down and I'm going to bring in my clear shimmer brush. And I'm just going to push this. I should give it a good shake first so that all the sparkly shimmery bits do shake up a little bit before I squeeze it out. And then I'm going to mix that with periwinkle and put a few little flecks on this. I've actually got some more of these that I prepared, so I'm going to do them all in one go. So I'm just going to tap my shimmer brush over top of this, picking up more and more of that periwinkle ink. And just add some sparkle and shine to these. Just going to squeeze out some more. Make a nice little puddle. I think this is just going to add a really nice amount of texture to these elements. I'm just making sure that every single one of these has some of this sparkle over them. And then I'm going to set these all aside. And then I'm going to bring this in and do some more to it. So I think I might need to add a little bit more periwinkle ink. So there we go. And I'm going to bring this water all up here and shake this again and make a puddle and do some over top of these waves. I don't know if the shine is picking up on camera, but it really does give a lovely effect. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the right page as well. I've got the main parts of my layout all adhered down now and now that the shimmer brush has dried I think you can pick up the sparkle that that gives to the layouts. I have gone ahead and I've adhered my summer title so now I'm just going to dry fit or in this case just start adhering these stickers on. I really love how that anchors that zip strip there and I'm still thinking whether or not I'm going to use this one. I'm not too sure so I'm just going to put that 
like that there it does sort of balance everything off so I think I will commit to putting that one down I love how the waves are coming out from all of the elements here and they're still quite soft with the glacier and the touches of the periwinkle even though I thought this was going to be too dark when I did it and thought I would have to start all over again I actually don't mind that on there I'm going to leave that exactly like it is so this little word art piece or word strip fits beautifully at the bottom of that so that the white edge of that just doesn't disappear into the stenciling that's behind that. I like how that's being anchored. And then I have all my little shapes that I'm going to now just scatter around and work out where I'm going to put. Having the darker edge of the periwinkle with the blending that I did just makes everything stand out just a little bit more from the base layer here and I'm going to create some clusters with these I'm going to overlap some I might pop some of them up on foam tape as well I'm just going to move the tray out of the way a little bit I think what I need to just make sure that I'm doing is balancing things off just a little bit I don't really want to put anything over this title here. I know there's a bit of white space up here, but I'm going to leave that there. I'm not going to put anything there because I think it just brings everything in together so that the main focus of my layouts will be my photos when they're adhered. So I'm just going to tuck a few of these around. Quite like how that looks just coming out from under there. And I don't think I'm going to use all of these. Of course, if you love to embellish, you can just keep adding more and more. It really is personal taste when it comes to putting embellishments on. I'm just going to bring this back in. I really do love how this has all come together. So I'm going to bring in their clear sparkles. And because I've got all these delicate little splashes, I think I might bring in the bitty ones. The bitty ones are just a little bit smaller and I think they will add just the right touch to this. So I'm just going to compare the two. I love how these are on clear sheets so I can just put them over top and decide what I'm going to do. And I'm definitely going to use the Bitty Sparkles. So I'm just going to slide these off the carrier sheet and sprinkle these around to finish off my pages. And I love how that adds just a little bit more sparkle and fun. To these layouts. Might put another one up here. So there's project four. I did want to show you that I did take, see this is my little practice that went wrong. I did take out the inside piece of this. Nobody's going to know that that's not there. And this is what happens if you don't clean your mat off in between doing your splatters, but it doesn't really matter because I won't be building on the back of this page. So it picked up a bit of the ink that was already on the all purpose mat, but I wasn't worried about clearing that off. Just something to remember if you do want to use the reverse side of your page to clear off in between doing some splattering. So I'll just bring this up so you can have a closer look at these delicate shell and starfish elements. They're really, really gorgeous and I'm going to be using these over and over again. Thank you so much for watching the fourth layout I've made from the Cape Cod Scrapbooking Workshop Kit. I have some more leftover paper, as you know, if you watched the last video. And stay tuned because I have two more layouts that I want to do with the leftovers from this kit. Once again, thank you for watching. As always, happy crafting and bye for now.